Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be making a melting snowball in Blender. Because one of you asked for it, here in Blender, I'm just going to save the scene. This scene will be available on my Patreon, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. Alright, so for this, I'm going to delete the light and the camera and the default cube. And I'll also turn on screencast keys for you so you can follow along. Then hit Shift A, then add in a cube again. And now with control one, two, three, or four, I can add in some subdivisions and these will be really great for our snowball. We need some more geometry. So that's why we are adding in a subdivision. Subdivisions basically uh, give the mesh more uh, geometry while also kind of smoothing the areas in between. So if I were to take a plane and deleting this vertex, you will see this is a really straight corner. But if I hit control three, this will be smoothed out. That is basically what a subdivision does. Uh, and we just did that to a cube. So a more complex shape. All right, in the modifier panel, I'm going to add a modifier, which is going to be this place. This will be great for our snowball since it will give some more geometry and texture and some randomness. So as you saw, I hit a new on this texture thing and this made a new texture. You can call this uh, displacement or whatever you want. You don't have to rename it. And with this button here, I can jump to the texture tab in the bottom. Right now, this displacement map is nothing. So we can either open the image we have, or we can just click this drop down and select one of these noise patterns we have here. Most of the times I use clouds because it looks pretty great, but you can do something else as well. I'm just going to choose clouds. We can play with this size to get it uh, more smoother or less smooth. I think something like a one will be fine, maybe 0.5, something like this. And then in the modifier panel, I can change the, th the strength, which is basically how much my snowball is going to be distorted. And I think this looks pretty great. I can hit right mouse button and shade smooth to shade this smooth. And this is my snowball. And now to make it melt. There are a couple ways to do this. I think a combination of all of these will be great. Uh, but to keep this short and simple, I'm just going to use the shape keys method, which is what the person in the comment was referring to. So I'm just going to help them out straight away and make this a shape key tutorial as well. So right now we have this geometry, which we have uh, subdivided and then displaced. This order matters, otherwise it will look different. If I place this at the top, you will see not really much will happen since we displace these eight vertices and then add subdivision, which smooths it out. But with more subdivision, we can displace more geometry. I think five is great. We have a great amount of detail. And I can just hover over this and hit Ctrl A and then Ctrl A again to apply all of these modifiers. And now we actually have a mesh. And now to melt the snowball, we can add in some shape keys. So to add in a shape key, you need to go over to this vertex data property or object data property. Then we see this vertex group uh, group and the shape keys group. In the shape keys, I want to hit plus to add in a base shape key. This will contain all the information of the position of the vertices and everything else we need. And this is basically like your uh, safety layer. You can always go back to this. So this is your original mesh. And then we can add in another shape key and you will see some values appear. Uh, the value in here is how much it's going to shift towards this key. And we can change that dynamically. Right now it does nothing because this key is the exact same uh, data as this one. So it will not smooth out, but we can change that as well. So with this key selected and our object selected, I can hit tab to go into edit mode. And then with this proportional editing, set to uh, smooth. I can select one of these vertices, hit G to move it. And I get this radius where I can influence my mesh. And I kind of want to move this down. So I can hit Z. So I can limit myself to the Z location. And then scroll to make the area of influence greater. And kind of just uh, make it all melty. So just move it down like this. And we want to get like a couple stages going on. We can also just uh, move them out a little bit. But make sure they're always down. So do not move them out and up. That will be weird. So just only down and maybe some different locations all right if we go back into object mode by hitting tab you will see that our mesh looks different that's because in object mode 
it will just take the uh, value here and kind of mix it together. And since it's at zero, it will be at the base mesh. So it will look like this. But if we change this value and set us to one, you will see that it will go towards my key one and it will kind of interpolate everything in between. Now, if we add another keyframe, this will also have a value. So if I now set this at one or zero, it doesn't matter because the data is the same as in our key two. So if I now move this a little bit more, make it even more melty, just by grabbing some vertices and moving them around. And now if I play with this value, you will see that it will go towards key two. And then I can play uh, with both of these to create a really cool melting effect. Maybe for good measure, we also need another key and then just set that to like almost melted. So really down all the way. It's fine if this loses some volume because of course there will be water dripping from this. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't uh, like keep the exact same volume. It will not look weird since this is meant to be a melting snowball. All right, so now we have a really extreme point and we can kind of uh, like play with this. So if we set everything to zero, this will be the base. If we set this to one, this will be our stage one. And we can add our second key to that. All right, set everything back to zero. And now in our timeline, which is right here, I want to add keyframes. So to do that, I can go over to frame zero, which is where I want my animation to start. You can start it at one as well. It's all up to preference. And then I want to hover over this value and hit I. I want to do this for every single one, just to make sure I have all the data. And then I can move forward like 20 frames and go over to key one and change this value to one. And then hit I again. This will insert a keyframe as well. And now if we hit play, you will see that we have a melting snowball. This might be a little bit too fast or too slow. So you can just uh, select one of these keyframes and then with your left mouse button, you can just drag it to wherever you want it to be. So maybe frame 10, this will be a lot quicker. And that's how you change that up. On frame 20, I want to set key two to one. And then frame 30, I want to set key three to one. And now we have this morphing going on. All right, so now our snowball would look like this and it will play like this. You can play with the smoothing if you want. Uh, but for this tutorial, I don't think I'm going to do that a whole bunch. I'm just going to keep it like this. Maybe even just uh, making these keyframes a little bit longer. So if I want to drag this out, for example, I could just play, place my playhead at uh, the first frame of our keyframes and then hit S to scale. And this will scale all of my keyframes. So let's say I want to make this uh, four times slower. I can just hit four. And now it will go pretty slowly. And this looks much better because it's much more gradual. And now I want to create a shader for this so we can actually render this. So I can go over to the viewport shading and go over to the render properties, make sure I'm on cycles for realistic rendering. And then I want to grab a environment texture. So for the preview, we could just go over to this drop down here and disable scene world. This will use a pre-generated HDRI. And then I can drag from the corner here and start working on the material. So I just select our object and hit new. And then we have our principal PSDF. And I want to add some bump in here. I want to add some nice reflections, some blue undertones, and maybe some subsurface scattering or something like that. So for the base color, I want to use white, maybe a little bit, a little bit bluish. Just a really tiny amount. If you want to change this only a little bit instead of a whole lot, you can press uh, shift while dragging. This will only change it a tiny amount. And then I can hit shift A and search for a Musgrave texture. With control shift and left mouse button, I can preview this if you have Node Wrangler enabled. And then I can turn up the detail, turn down the dimension to get even more detail. And then shift A to add in a bump node. Connect the height to the height and a normal to the normal. And then control shift and left mouse button to preview this. 
This will add in some nice details. I want to turn down the roughness a little bit, but also have some variations. So I'm going to use this uh, Musgrave texture in the roughness. And then in between this, I want to add in a color ramp. This preview this and set this black value to be also pretty rough, but uh, just to have some difference, something like this. Or other way around, I want to have it more shiny, of course. So like this. Let's see what a subsurface scatter will do. So go over to the subsurface um, tab, just open it up. If this uh, shader doesn't look the same, you're probably in Blender 3.6 or below. I'm in 4.0, so it looks like this, but it has the same functionality. Uh, subsurface will be under base color, I think it was, but now we have this drop down. Anyways, we can see what this does. We can set the radius to all the way to 1, because the default will be for uh, skin, which is not what we want. It's really nice that Blender has this, because a lot of people use this for skin, but we are going to be using it for snow. So we set this to 1, and then the weight, we can just uh, play with that until it looks all nice and snowy. This is going to have a really big hit to your performance, so just keep that in mind. Do not do this if you have a bad PC. And this will be the difference. So this is without, and this is with. So it look, makes the snow look a lot more fluffy. All right, so I think this can be our snowball. We can also maybe add in some clear coat. Let's see what that does. Just makes it a lot smoother. No, that's not realistic. All right, do not do that. I think this will be a really nice uh, snowball with a really nice animation. So just find a nice angle for your animation. I will do that in edit mode since that's a lot more visible. So I think this angle will be really nice. Just the silhouette will make it really believable. Click shift A to add in a camera and then uh, control alt and zero on my numpad to snap the camera to the view and then just move it like you normally would with G and with C. I can hit G and then double G to constrain it to like zooming in and out. So it's really nice. And I'm just going to position my camera to look really nice at the snowball. Make sure it's in frame all of the time. So right now it's only in frame at the end, but I also want to be in frame at the beginning. So I need some more space. We can also add some keyframes to the camera position, uh, but I won't do that for now since I think this will uh, this will be fine. All right, we can just turn off the scene world and now it will be black or gray. Yours will probably look uh, something like this. And I just want to hit shift A to add in a light and then an area, move it up and scale it up a little bit just to get some nice top lighting, increase the power until it gives a nice silhouette like this. I always like this lighting. It's really ominous, really uh, studio-like, studio uh, really. I also want a light from the back to see that subsurface scattering. So I'm going to go over to my lamp and hit Shift D. And then with double R, I'm going to rotate it and just point it at my camera. Scale it up a little bit and then move it behind my object. And remember to point this at your camera. It doesn't have to be exact, but it can just be uh, something like this. All right, let's preview that. That light will add that really nice uh, glow to the sides. Then I want to duplicate this again and then just rotate it and put it somewhere on the left or the right. For now, I'm going to choose the left, but you can change that uh, however you want. And this light shouldn't be uh, that intense, so turn down the power. Then go into rendered mode. And this will be our fill light. So this will just add in some more details. Then we can play with the power of these lights to really get, get a nice effect. Then if you want, for bonus points, you can add in an environment texture. So go over to your world properties, click on this yellow icon and change this to an environment texture. Then click open, then go over to uh, the location where you have Blender installed. Then I'm going to go to Blender 4.0 or whatever version you have, then 
then I'm going to go to data files, then I'm going to go to uh, studio lights, then I'm going to go to world, and here are your default HDRIs, which will be packed with Blender. So we can just uh, choose one of these. I want to go for outdoor. So let's go with uh, forest or sunrise. I'm going to go with forest. Then I want to set the strength to 0 0.05. Just something really small, just so we have some environment lighting, but not too much. So maybe 0.1. This will give some extra natural lighting and colors to the scene as well. But now it is showing up in the render. So we need to go over to the shader editor again, then change the shader type to world. Then in here we have our HDRI with the background. And I want to hit shift D to duplicate this background and set this to a black color or whatever like a uh, matte background you want. You can change it to any color, doesn't really matter. Then I want to mix these two together. So with shift A, I'm going to add in a mix shader node put this in here and then this should be on the top input and this should be at the bottom and then in this factor I'm going to use a is camera array light path all right my bad the background should be in the back like this and now your background will be uh, black but you will have lighting from your HDRI as you can see here so basically what this does is blender looks at if your light path is a camera ray if it is you want to mix that with this black color if not you can use this so for the lights itself so the lights that bouncing on this uh, object it will use the hdri but for the camera it will use the black background so that's how you can get a uh, nice lighting with a black background all right i think i've explained a little bit too much for this but this is my melting snowball with shape keys in blender I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. If you want something in the future, just leave a comment. This will be available on my Patreon and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.